Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins, and welcome to Financial Love Making. This is where we talk about love, life, money, and everything in between. I'm here with my buddy, partner, and co-host, uh, the Entertainment Director at Ebony Magazine, Miss S. T. S. T. of Brown. How you doing today, Tia? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm I'm not as happy as you, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting topic that we've been talking about offline today. Yes. It's about weddings. Apparently, a, a study from Emory University says that the more money you spend on your engagement ring and on your wedding, the more likely you are to get a divorce. Surprise, surprise. And I'm just going to read a few of the statistics. They're basically saying that studies found that if you spent between $1,000 and $4,000 for a ring, you were more likely to have a longer lasting marriage. And if you spent if you spend less than $20,000 on your wedding, you're more likely to have a longer lasting marriage. Couples who spent more than $20,000 on their wedding had 3.5 times greater chance of getting a divorce. So what does that mean? The stress from spending all this money that you don't have has a negative impact on the actual being of the marriage. And this is something that we're always talking about here at Financial Love Making. You know, what what is happiness? What does wealth tru- truly look like? And it doesn't look like spending a whole bunch of money on things you can't afford, for things you can't afford to oppress people who you're only going to see for the day. <laughs> you're laughing there, boys. What do you want to say? Uh, I, I'm definitely laughing because... Um... Uh, I, I've always assumed that maybe there was just something about me, perhaps as a man, I don't know, uh, that did not allow me to really understand the importance of spending everything you've got on one wedding day. I, yeah. I never got it. Now, fortunately, though, there there are plenty of, of women who also think the same way as well, who are saying, why spend $30,000 on one ceremony for other people when you could put that money on a house? Now, uh, you know, I, I thought that maybe part of it was if we have a better ceremony, we're going to get more gifts and maybe we'll get a good return on our investment or perhaps the emotional oh, meaning behind please, it. But it didn't make any sense to me. One of the biggest things that I'm always telling my friends, you know, I'm of the age where so many people get married. It doesn't matter if you spend $10,000 on a wedding or $50,000 on a wedding. Your gift ultimately is the same dollar amount. <laughs> you get the same take no matter what. Right. <laughs> So people have these weddings and it's like $275 per plate and it's like you still get $75 per head or $100 per head on average. So you end up at a deficit. The whole purpose of a wedding is supposed to be to celebrate your union and for people to gift you things to help you start this new phase of your life. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I just had No, to. no. That was a good interruption. I'm glad you, I'm glad you jumped in there because... Um, I think that we do have to think about what our love really means. Um, I think that you, you, the point you made about the financial stress, I think is extremely important. Uh, I think people need to clearly understand how many marriages end because of financial stress. That, yeah. That's the first thing. So, so you know, when you're in these situations where uh, we, we live in a society where we constantly see people around us who don't seem to make enough money to afford the things that they're buying. You, you ever notice that? I mean, I mean do, have you ever sat there and you're said, like, and, yeah, and, and, and been thinking like, wait a minute, I know you make half of what I make. How do you, how can you afford that, bent, that you know, Beamer, Bentley, whatever it is you're driving? How do you afford that house? I mean, maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe I'm not managing. You know what I mean? Do, do you ever, have right. you ever had that feeling when you walked in somebody's house and Absolutely. saw how they were living? You wonder about it all the time. I remember specifically in, in college and undergrad, there were these, you know, the fly girls on campus, you know, who had the hottest shoe, the new coat, you know, and I, and I remember one day I was getting my hair done in the dorm and, um, you know, you have like these little uh, makeshift businesses in the dormitory. I love that about school. And the beautician who was licensed, she's got her cosmetology license in high school and she was fabulous. I still use her to this day, came in with like six pairs of shoes. And I was just like, how did you get all of this stuff? And you find out later, credit. A lot of people misuse their credit uh, as uh, in college. And, and that continues because we live in a consumer-based society where it's I see, I want, I must have, I figure out how to get it, I figure out how to pay for it later. And it just adds so much stress to a relationship because this $30,000 that magically appears uh, usually is either on credit or you're skimping and scrimping from something else, betting on fixing it later. And that later, you know, when you're single and, and you misspend your money, you only have to answer to you, right? Or you have a shortage, you only have to answer to yourself. But when you're a couple, you have a partner. 
and you both have needs that come up and you both have spending habits that now have to be adjusted. And it's just extremely problematic. So my advice to people who are looking to get married, don't focus on the wedding day financially. Focus on the experience. You know, back in the day before the wedding industry became so huge, people got married in backyards, they got married on the beach, they got married at a church and had a simple down-home meal afterwards. It's really about the union. It's not about impressing people with all the glitz and glamour. You don't have to have a million dollar or a thousand dollar wedding to have a happily ever after. In fact, the study shows the more you spend, the less likely you are to get to that happily ever after. And that's the ultimate goal. Right, and, and let's talk about the power of marketing. Let's talk about right. how, how corporations will play with your head to convince you that you have to spend a certain amount on your diamond to prove that you love her. So you, you've got so many ads out here that literally will correlate love, sex, and affection with how big that damn rock is on your finger. And it, it, it makes us look stupid and gaudy and... And, you get and people, broke. Right, right. There you go. I mean, and broke and, and, and ignorant. I mean... Uh, in fact, I saw this great Bloomberg documentary about uh, – it was about advertising as a whole, but they were talking about how in the 1960s, the diamond industry said, you know, let's, let's, let's come up with a slogan that's really going to make people want diamonds. So, so they came up with diamonds are forever, the, the, which is one of the most famous slogans in all of marketing. They put it in, in a James Bond movie. They yeah. kept repeating it, and people got to the point where they began to associate diamonds with love. And then they started this other campaign that says that, uh, that you should spend two months' salary. Well, that's that's a bunch of crap. It, that, and it's not that too is much. Wrong. It's a little bit more than that. So it, exactly. I mean, two, two months out. I mean, that will that will set you back. And and I can say this, you know, as as a representative of the of the gender that is at least traditionally expected to spend all that money on the ring. Um, you know that there is so much pressure behind that, so much pressure behind that, and you know, and and, and I I can say I knew a guy who was getting who was going to get married. And he loved this woman so much. And, he, and I, I said, what is it that you love about her so much? And he said, one thing I love about her is is that when we picked the ring, this is one of many things. He said, when we picked the ring, she didn't put pressure on me to make me feel like I had to spend a ton of money. She wanted something nice, but mm-hmm. she didn't, you know, she would have thought I was crazy to spend two months salary or whatever. I and that, that took the pressure off. And so I think if you want to take, so, so marriage is already stressful. It's already difficult. Um, you don't need more pressure. So I say, you know, get through the marital process, get through the engagement process in a way that allows you to still have a little bit of the flash. I mean, you don't want to have a, you know, a little crappy wedding or anything, but something decent without blowing the whole bank account and, and focus on the fundamentals of, of, oh my God, love, right? I, I say, I, I say, oh my God, because it's like, it almost seems that sometimes people get so caught up in the ceremony of it that they forget that love and and togetherness and your partnership is supposed to be the foundation of what you're creating together. And you, you should put more energy into learning the ins and outs and the fundamentals of making a relationship work than you do into the, the superficial of what you're showing to the world. And I think people kind of forget that. I absolutely agree, and we'd love to hear your thoughts out there. Should people be spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on a wedding, ten thousand dollars on an engagement ring, or should they keep it simple and focus on the fundamentals of the relationship? Thanks for.